These specific guidelines concern themselves with molecular testing. So this is looking at changes in genes, DNA, that's associated with cancer. It's a guideline provide a practical treatment of lung cancer patient for the pathologist, uh, oncologist, uh, and also the molecular scientist. Guidelines is a tool for ensuring that the right treatment comes to the right patients. Since the last report, which was published in 2013, several things have happened. We have identified more important targets for new drugs, and we have developed a lot more new drugs. And the clinical trials have matured since then, so we have more results to build the guidelines on. The original guidelines recommended testing two genes, EGFR and ALK. We're now recommending adding a third gene, which is ROS1. So there are now three genes being recommended instead of just two. And in addition, there are five other genes that we think are important, but not necessarily have to be done universally. And so what we're recommending in this case is a newer technology called next generation sequencing, which can be used to look at many genes at once, and then we can include these five as well as the other three. We think about the global situation and integrate these uh, geographical differences. For example, the EGFR mutation is very frequent in Asian patients, but not in the Caucasian uh, the population. There are also some changes about looking at circulating uh, cancer DNA in blood, so-called liquid biopsy, that would enable us to test patients with lung cancer potentially without having to get an invasive procedure like a surgery to get tissue out, but rather to look for changes that can be seen with a blood test. The future is today uh, in many ways. New technologies, better testing methodologies. Molecular testing is crucial for uh, giving the patient the best treatment uh, option. Well, it just keeps going, right? So uh, we only had two genes a couple of years ago. Now we have seven, eight. Uh, and we keep finding different subsets of alterations that are important in lung cancer. The percentages for each are getting smaller and smaller. So I think we've actually found most of the things that are common. But the uncommon things are very important to the people who have them. And so we're not going to stop looking now. And as we find more and more less common alterations that can be treated, we're going to add those to the list of things that should be tested routinely so that we can give everyone the right kind of treatment.